But what do I know? Um, the, uh, I don't, I don't know how I even think I deserve. By the way, you're watching House Sparks Mega Worldwide. Hi, welcome. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Super Chats, Venmo. There's a Venmo thing here. I haven't mentioned that in ages, but it's there. It's always there. You can help the show. You can subscribe. That helps. Our numbers are going up. It's fun. If you like the show, just the thumbs up is cool. Subscribe and help us out. Help us grow. Thank you, patrons. Patreon.com slash House Sparks. You guys um, are our rock, and I appreciate it. Now, I don't even know how I deserve to even question Sean Hannity or any people at Fox News, because what do I know about masculinity? I got long hair. I do rock band stuff. I have... I work out, I have a garage full of tools, but it's all just pretend. It's all just me wanting to be a man that I'll never be. Uh, and it's because I, as, a, as a Democrat, uh, obviously I'm engaged in some sort of war on, uh, on manliness, man, manny man things. Yes, I also have cats. That also probably does it. You're right. So um, obviously... How, how can I even hope to compete with masculine ideals, the, the buff of the buff, like Ben Shapiro and Tucker Carlson and fuck, even, even Bill Maher. They're using a clip of Bill on Newsmax. This is from Prime News. I, 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 I feel like it's the, the Chuck roast, but whatever. This is supposedly Prime. So this has got to be the Aces shit, not this crap that Greg Kelly spits out every night. Oh no, this is prime news. And apparently, um, according to this video, the left is at war with masculinity. That's right. We don't like masculine shit. That's, uh, and we hate America, which is why my house is full of Captain America stuff because he's, <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, that's, I got this at Disneyland. Um, it's a pen. It's the weirdest thing. His legs... It's a pen. It's, it's so very odd. But it stands up, like, you can set it on, and it actually stands. I was like, all right, that's cool. So, um, so I have a pen, in case I need one. Anyways, uh, yes. T and tanning nuts, I don't, I, you know, I, I read light therapy, I will admit to that. And I am, uh, was, let's just say, semi-nude when it happens. Because the thing's only this tall, so I can't get everything. Um, it's, so I just kind of lower it to kind of sh show my V taper, which I've been working on. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> this is, uh, um, I have a Captain America mask. Very cool. So I'll all in it. And many of you know that I'm, I'm a big fan of that, but we'll talk about that another time. I, but how dare I, how dare I even bring it? What the fuck do I know about masculinity with my, you know, rainbow everything and my eyeshadow and my gay friends and whatever else it's supposed to not be masculine that they freak out about. Anyways, let's see. Let's see if uh, um, Captain Masculinity, um, a man who I I think is skinny just because he hates food, um, largely. I'm pretty sure he's still uh, vegan or vegetarian, but um, I, I never, never one of those guys where there's never been a Bill Maher men's health cover that wasn't about, like, comedy, I suppose. Let's find I'm trying out. Trying to get at the root cause. Why are men in such crisis? The young men aren't attaching to work. They aren't attaching to women. They aren't attaching to schools. We are producing too many of the most dangerous person in society. The By the way, that isn't because uh, masculinity doesn't exist or whatever. It's because it's unbridled and untethered to anything of worth like this asshole. Um, masculine, my belief is, uh, masculinity is about corralling your testosterone and making it useful as, fo as opposed to damaging. You cannot avoid it. Men aren't attaching to women. Yeah, they, they um, apparently, right now, some, uh, there's some statistic that just came out that like 50% of men under the age of 30 um, haven't dated or had sex in a year, which is an incredible number in, you know, historic numbers. Now, there have been other times around the Industrial Revolution and other times like that where, A, nobody would even ask you that fucking question, but certainly a percentage of the populace never got married, never had kids, died early, 
you know, got tuberculosis and fucking keeled over on a train and nobody cared that they were lonely or whatever. Um, so, um, there, and, and there are definitely like kind of in the TikTok progressive slacktivist area, there's a lot of shitting on men that goes there, but in the general world, honest to God in your regular interactions, unless you spend, I mean, all your time online, you're not experiencing that shit. So, but you know, let's see what this douchebag has to say. The world we live in today tries very, very hard to not respect the fact that I look like a classic douchebag from a Miami Vice episode where I auditioned but didn't get the job. To refuse a man his natural instincts as a man. Women? No, no, no. Uh, you can have your natural instincts as a man. You just can't piggishly take them out on women without their permission. And if you, quite frankly, if you have real skill, you know, I've said this before, Trump was bragging about grabbing women by the pussy. If you, if you have any real game, any real worth, if you have any true masculinity or you have any allure as a man, you don't have to grab it. They'll walk right up and put it in your hand because they want to. But these guys, you have to understand, people like that can never get to a point where they can count on a woman wanting them. And maybe I'm partial because I grew up during the hair metal age and that music is all based on I'll be your backdoor man I'll sneak around you're I'm the guy you really want that kind of conversation which is not the sort of aggressive douchebag shit that you heard late 90s or the sad sort of uh nihilistic new metal shit that drove a lot of conversations around or, or even rap for that matter for the last decade and a half about you know female male interactions so I come from more you know, which, you know, rock music, especially um, you know, like classic rock and, and, and the hair era was largely, if you listen to it, largely Casanova based. The idea is that you're, I'm, I'm the guy you want. And there was a certain like femininity to the men because of that, because it was alluring. You weren't afraid to look a little girlish and, and yet still maintain that masculinity. That, that was never a problem. And then all of a sudden there was this like, Outbreak of like, you got to trick girls into liking you. Well, yeah, if you have, if you look like shit, you sound like si shit, you smell like shit, you're a jerk and nobody wants to be around you. Get more scholarships than men. They win more awards academically than men. They get better grades than men do. Women are more likely to get into college. They're more likely to graduate from college. Women have, they earn more bachelor's degree. They earn more graduate degree, advanced degrees. Our education system is actually structured so that women are more successful than men. How does... Well, no, because they played a lot of catch up, quite frankly. <coughs> the, 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 the college system was, was very, like, um, leaned very heavily towards, uh, I guess, uh, attracting males because they would make more money over time and blah, blah, blah. Now, as women can make equal amounts of money since the, the late 80s, there's been a trend towards attracting more women to campus. And they stay longer. Men tend to go four years. Women tend to go f six and eight sometimes. So as a college, you're going to attract the person that's going to stay the longest. It's, it's, it, it is not some sort of, again, they always attribute the shit to some sort of deep state Illuminati fucking nonsense. When in reality, it's just who's your customer? How do you keep the hooks in? Disgusting that we live in this self-care, self-love, girl, you're a queen, pour yourself a glass of rosé and take a bubble bath and run away from your problems culture. As soon as you say that a man should have value in himself, high value in himself, you are promoting violent misogyny and sexism. Well, it's because of who you choose. I, th I believe that men should be of high value. I think they should work to be that way. I think every human being should, but because I'm a man, I, <laughs> I, I think I have more to say on that subject than, than a woman would because she doesn't experience testosterone and all the other elements of being a male any more than I would tell a woman how to be the right kind of woman that be stupid. So as a man though, being of high value, like working hard and respectfully, being smart, contributing to the world, being a decent human being, trying to, you know, whatever you do, dive into it passionately and make the most of it. Um, and if you decide because you want to 
bury yourself in work that some other elements of your life have to suffer. You take that on the nose and recognize it that for that period of time, that's part of your life. That's, that's what I think would be a high value man. Um, what she considers a high value man is douchebags like Andrew Tate, who's a scam artist with a fucking shaved head who's running a a, a, a kidnapping and, and brothel industry in Romania. Fuck him. He's a low-value pimp. Topping tonight's prime news, the death of masculinity and the complex, urgent crisis that nobody's talking about. Nobody except every fucking body. Like, literally, again, we've talked about Jordan Peterson and basically how he's like the, he's like the, old Canadian uncle who gives you a couple of tips, kid, because your dad's kind of a drunk. Right now, radical progressive extremists are producing a society that no longer values men. And if you don't... Can I... May, can I... If I may? No longer values men. Um, hold on. Um, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when is this? Let's see, hold on. Uh, this, hold on. <laughs> Schedule, where is it? This is the monster truck uh, jam that's happening. Uh, it's, re in, it's coming to Reno and Sparks. Hey, um, April 21st and 23rd. Uh, Jan uh, January, they're in Virginia, San Antonio, St. Louis, Missouri, Milwaukee, New Jersey, Sacramento, blah, blah. Do you think anybody in the, where's a, like, give me some pictures or some of some of this shit. Yeah, here you go. You think the crowds at these places are mar largely made up of, of like short haired, um, feminists who are, the place is fucking packed and there's not a single person there who thinks they're not allowed to eat meat, chop wood, get a fucking job doing construction or whatever the fuck. The existence of Harry Styles, if, if your masculinity is so fucking fragile that you can't stand the existence of someone like Harry Styles or fucking David Bowie or something like that, that's not masculinity's problem and it's certainly not a societal thing. You're fucking weak. That's, I, I don't know how else to put it. I, I, all these assholes are like, I want to be a real man. And then when this stuff happens, like, I am not allowed to be me. I don't know. Like, just do it. Show your masculinity. And, and if you're being shamed for it, you're not being shamed for being masculine. You're being shamed because you're a fucking dick. Oh, God, it's so tiresome. And also, I will say for the record... I, I'm not into Harry's music, and I think we're kind of related because of the last name Styles in somewhere. But straight guys borrowing women's clothing for the the sort of like look how much of an ally I am and that kind of stuff is it does seem to be like the borrowed victimhood of transgenders transgenderism. Like that the transgender people have enough to deal with, and you're wearing their shit like a costume. They're they're really dealing with where their, you know, where their life is. And you're like, yeah, I can wear this when I want to. And when I don't, fuck it. Don't believe me. Listen to the facts. Today, men make up less than 40% of new college graduates, but 70%. Yeah. What do are, what are the uh, vocational jobs look like? And also, college is not where you go to be a manly man, necessarily. These are intellectual pursuits. N notice how when they bring this up, they don't talk about the vocational numbers which are either just fine or growing. Of drug also, uh, most people like coders, especially people who are, you know, coding or going or developing tech and stuff don't most of the time end up going to college for it. They end up going to fucking DeVry. They end up going to like tech colleges or vocational tech schools like DeVry and they don't go to college for that because they don't have to. Or they, they get a job, <coughs> they, they get a certificate in one of those places, and then they go work in IT for a long time. Overdose deaths and 80% of gun violence deaths are... 
That's always true. Men are always the higher numbers. For men, and the suicide rates among men are startling. One man dies by suicide every 13 minutes in America. That's 80% of overall suicides. For every female death by suicide, there are four more men taking their own lives. Right. That's almost always been the case. Something needs to change. American men have been left out to dry, and nothing good will come of this. Well, we'll be drier, I think. I feel I'm, I'm fairly, I'm not damp at all. I just want you guys to know that. I don't want you to worry on my behalf. I've been, we've been left into damp. Folks, the political left is struggling to offer a positive vision of masculinity. I think I do just fine. Uh, I would recommend uh, becoming a Mason if you're a guy. Meet some other men. Be a dude. Learn to be a gentleman. Kind of cool. Progressives champion gender confusion. They want to normalize men wearing dresses instead of a man opening up a. Uh, excuse me, Braveheart did that a long time ago. And if I want to wear a kilt, fuck off. Door for a woman. Leftists are making an act. No, they aren't. Like, I, honest to God. This this has been a talking point since fucking. The, since the National Organization for Women started, since the ERA was first introduced. This whole, like, you can't even open a door for chicks, blah, 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 blah. That's never been the fucking case. I can open the door for fucking anybody. I've never, at, ever, and I've met tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Have I opened a door for someone and they're going, excuse me, I can get the fucking door myself, okay? Like, who the, who, who does that? Faux accounts online bitch about that shit. What are you talking about? effort to grow the number of transgender surgeries, which by the way is poison. Why would you need an active effort to grow the number of transgender surgeries? You would, you would want as many as there need to be because people are transgender and no more. I, I think it would grow it to the number so that everyone who is transgendered has ac to access to the medical services they would need. But you're not trying to like, hey, have you ever thought about cutting your dick off for no particular reason? Um, you ever thought, wouldn't it be, have you ever thought that women have it easy? So maybe you could try to be a chick. Like nobody fucking does that. This, this is the new version of the gay agenda. Remember the fucking gay agenda? Holy shit. For years. Oh my God. The, the gay agenda. And then you're like, you know, my point is about the gay agenda was, is that if someone is holding someone underwater and that person is fighting to not be drowned, the person who is being, who is in the process of being drowned does not have an agenda. They are just trying to get their head above water. ...to become a $5 billion industry by the end of the decade. Worldwide. Also, medication, therapy, surgery, hormones, I mean... A myriad of things. We have a $26 trillion economy. Don't talk in billions and have me fucking expect me to clutch the pearls I don't wear because I'm a fucking man. Rather than encourage young men to provide for their families. Without hey, uh, Gary, uh, I know you're a little worried about, uh, you got pro provider anxiety and what if you have a kid and and you lose your job and you're nervous about it. You ever thought about just being a chick? Apparently you can. Jesus Christ. Got a clear positive vision of masculinity. Male voters are abandoning the Democratic Party at historically high rates, leaving men, nearly half of the American population, tied to everything the mainstream media deems abhorrent and indefensible. The left thinks men are- Such as? The root of all problems. Uh, no. No, men are not the root of all problems. As a matter of fact, we were just talking about Ginny Thomas and Candace Owens a few moments ago. Well, I, for one, I'm here to stand up for the men in America. We well, while you're standing there, make me a sandwich. I don't even know why you think you have the right to, I mean, you're, you're get, uh, go, go mop something. <laughs> don't stand up for me. Sit down here on this level, little lady. Hey, hey. Like that's, <laughs> fuck it, this is who she's defending. We need strong, functioning men in society. Here I am. We need to embrace their masculinity and what? Mm. I, I do my best. I, I really do. I uh, always wear jeans. Apparently, you guys think that helps. Um, I, I work out. Um, not as much lately because I've been sick. <laughs> but 
you know, I'm not one of those pitiful men who gets in bed and whines and says, take care of me when he's sick. I just want to be left alone like a cat. Just stay in the other room. I'll uh, not, you're not seeing me at my best. What they have to offer. And mm. let me be clear. I'd say what I got to offer. Come on now. Here you go. Make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and get me a beer. All right. Claire, not every man is going to be six foot six and a bodybuilder. They're not all Carl Higbee's out there, and that's okay. It's not a. Thank you. Thanks for. I feel better. I was worried there for a second. Five nine, buck sixty five, fully clothed, soaking wet, but I'm tight. About that. I'm not here to tear anyone down who isn't the. You kind of are, though. Most macho guy in the room. But well, of course not. You're, everybody at Newsmax, especially Greg Kelly, would be all pissed off and grumpy and wouldn't look you in the eye in the hallway. I'm also not going Not that they have the... <laughs> they can they nut up and do it now. I'm going to tear down someone who embodies physical and emotional strength because if we let masculinity die at the hands of the woke mob, this is what we will end up with. Quick little pronoun update. So after a several days long gender crisis, I am pretty certain I use they, they, he pronouns. And yeah, I just want to let you know I am still trans femme. I am still on HRT. I am not detransitioning or anything. Just my gender is a complete nightmare. Okay. Um, t there is a trans trender crisis that is happening, especially when people start taking uh, hormones. That's been spreading all over the country. There's a there's a big blowback on that kind of thing. People like that on TikTok are people who bought into something and thought that their own either uh, autistic traits or their own uh, emotional problems were related to their gender expression when they were absolutely not and that they were chasing some sort of style point. That happens in the real world. That has nothing to do with the current state of masculinity. Nothing. Or femininity for that matter. No one is taking cues off of people who don't have any cues to give. Good Lord. We know Democrats don't seem to know what a woman is these days, but does anyone? No, it's a, there's a couple things. One, uh, it's uh, the primary description is an adult human female. That's fine. A woman can also be a female who exudes the best traits of, of, of being female. So she's a woman as opposed to a girl or a chick or a hoe or whatever any other second, which are categorizations of behavioral stereotypes around certain kinds of females. Um, or I suppose males, if, uh, if you're using, you know, overlapping language, it just doesn't mean that's the only thing it can mean. Is that so hard? Is that hard? Everybody okay? Anyone even remember how this become a Democrat thing? Because they're having a masculinity crisis because they're being... The right is being led around by Glenn Beck, Ben Shapiro, Tucker Carlson. Like, they're all a bunch of fucking weenies. And they have a real hard time figuring... And Trump, who's a fucking wuss. And so they they have this... Like, it, like Rogan's their one like, he's all buff. Like, that's the one person they can kind of hang on to. But the problem is, he's an outlier. There's nothing particularly masculine about Alex Jones. He's, he's a bloat. Matt Walsh, another example. Like, he he looks like any kind of college campus wuss who would run from a fight that you'd see anywhere. So all the, the idea that he's on the right and somehow that makes him more masculine is just stupid. This is just, this is a stare. Uh, here's what I really think. This is, I mean, I'm telling you what I really think, but I really, I'm forming the idea here is that I think in some ways... The right is having such an identity crisis about the men that have been leading them from Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham to fucking Santos and Trump and all that, that none of them exemplify this masculine, these masculine qualities they're talking about, even as providers for their own fucking families, quite frankly. None of them really stand out in those ways. I mean, they're, you know, certainly not long form Christian, marry one woman, stay with her, have some kids death to us part, those kind of things. Like they've abandoned and jettisoned all that shit. So they really do have a an issue on their side of the aisle with what masculinity, the ideal that they have, the limited version of what it is, and the actual crop of men that they are, they are they're falsely attributing these characteristics to or that they were wishing were different. 
and and on and unfortunately on the democratic side we kind of don't give that big a shit we just people are who they are and because you know heteronormative uh society is built on the fact that the vast majority of people are heterosexual and that's how people procreate and that's just how it is it's we're all born this way whatever this way is and the vast majority of people because of how population works and how genetic extension works are straight or are some version of straight that that on, on the democratic side you, you got a bunch of like eric swalwells and michael fanones and 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 quite frankly um they used to have schwarzenegger and now they consider him a, at best a rhino if not a full-on democrat so they're losing that crowd and they don't know this is not about democrats this isn't about harry styles this isn't even about transgender people this is about their own mismatch with this this ideal that they've set up in their own way and the and the shit they're having to they want a bronze statue and they've just got a pile of turds to make it out of this is about them this is about their issue amongst themselves they're seeing their own men weaken and and become just kind of lazy i guess remember what a man is that is the underlying question tristan justice of the federalist tackles in his latest piece mask tristan you think a guy named tristan justice is having issues with his name not sounding buff enough uh, honest to god considering he's a republican Masculinity isn't toxic, toxic, our erasure of it is. In the article, Justice writes, those who wrote off masculinity as toxic never truly understood the concept. Not like Tristan does. Adding, quote, when you lose sight of what it means to be a man, what it means to look like a man, act like a man, and live like a man, you de facto lose the values that form the foundation of healthy masculinity. But our culture doesn't even know what a man is. Okay, by the way, this is the Federalist. You and I don't read the Federalist. The Federalist isn't written for the rest of the public. The Federalist is written for Republicans to read. Now, they'll, he'll use a title that sounds like it's about the left to draw people into reading this. But in reality, if you look at the breakdown of this, that this is the issue. This is, again, this is their problem. They're looking at Ted Cruz and they're looking at Lindsey Graham and they're looking at fucking Matt Gates and Donald Trump and going, what a fucking pathetic crop of, of, I, I mean, I like, I wouldn't even call them like unmasculine. At some point, they're just, just, just male passing for masculine. This is their problem. This is, this is their freak out. This isn't about, again, whether fucking, Pop artists dress in women's clothes occasionally, which has fucking happened forever. Like, they're still, what are they, still freaking out about Iggy Pop's eyeshadow on Letterman? That Twisted Sister was wearing lingerie? That the, the Poison album coming out? David Bowie? Get fucked. Again, I grew up, and, and as a huge Kiss fan, you guys know this, and... I have always been a, a Paul Stanley fan, like of the band. I mean, I loved all the characters, you know, that they did the star child, the spaceman, the demon and the cat man, like that kind of stuff. I loved that as a kid, but I always was in, in some way, the same way people are like, liked Robert Plant or Jim Morrison or something. This kind of like, you know, toying with feminine energy, but still maintaining your masculinity. And, and for fuck's sake, let me show you something. Hold on. See if I can, um, let me, see. there's a, um, yeah. There was a photo shoot from Hotter Than Hell that um, I remember seeing when I was, a kid. here it is. So this is, um, this is going to be on Pinterest, here you go. This, I remember seeing this when I was, uh, hold on. And now let me blow this up so I can see it. Uh, block. View image. Here you go. Let me see if I can. Okay. So this is this is a, a photo shoot that Kiss did 
There's a little bit of nudity peeking through, but most people are turned away or she's covered up or whatever. Here's Paul down here. Here's Ace. Drunk. I, you know, there's Gene up in the back. Uh, where the fuck is Peter? Uh, is he drinking? Is he? I, I'm not even sure he's in the shot. Where the fuck did he go? He's, I think he's behind her. Anyway, see this naked lady who's uh, got silver face paint on her like she's been making out with Ace and then they had to remake him up. Paul right here. This is Paul. Like, he, oh, there's there's Peter. He's way up in the corner. Look at this. He's way up here. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. But um, I remember very distinctly as a kid um, seeing this photo. And with all of Paul's, like, you know, femininity that was a, that was um, prevalent. Oh, they, they're selling shirts and tops. There you go. See, see this, like, the whole, like, his red lipstick and eyeliner and all that kind of stuff and very feminine um, accentuation of his bone structure and all that kind of stuff. And obviously long hair and its association with femininity and blah, 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 they, whatever. Jesus had long hair too. Fuck around. But anyways, I remember seeing this photo shoot when I was a kid. And this was in so many ways, like the, an example of what, of the, of the openness of like male sexuality that, um, and, and I got to tell you, it, it worked. Like when I was a kid, partly seeing Paul Stanley being sort of this feminine icon in many ways with the, with the red lipstick and, and the star and all that kind of stuff, his outfits, and always being surrounded by um, beautiful women. As a kid, I was like, uh, as, a, you know, as, as a young man forming my sexuality, um, this was all, get out of here. Um, I was all, and, and so I screw it back into here. Um, let me see. Uh, basically what it said to me was, as long as you're attractive to the kind of woman you want, what, how that attractiveness comes about is in and of itself part of being masculine. Uh, th that photo was taken by Hillary Clinton to force Clinton to be get blowjobs in return for an open border. Yeah, right. Poison was basically doing full drag and the ladies would go nuts for them. Exactly, Timmy. And I would like to say that the first um, uh, Poison album is the, big, is the best punk record of the 80s because what is punk but totally an affront to the current value system and freaking everyone out. And those fucking guys, they looked like women at the time. And that... That freaked out everybody. You can spit on people and and be all gross and whatever you know you consider punk to be, but those guys, like they were fucking dead serious, and and just full on. Look what the cat dragged in that album. Like, so anyways, the the point was is that you see all these, like the ridiculousness that went on. It was, I mean, these guys got laid. And, um, and so I never had this, like, corralled version of what sexuality, like, it had to fit some sort of, like, butch, douchebag version of, you know, some country musician who also, I don't know, whatever the fuck, version of masculinity that these assholes are selling, that they're so trapped in, that they're, that it's, that I think it becomes toxic because it's so, it's almost like the kind of masculinity you do when you're with and around men and you're jockeying in a, com in, in a competitive way with each other, but doing, like doing that with women, which doesn't work. I mean, it might work with some and everybody's their own, but I'm saying in general, it's terrible. You just come across as like a, a brash Andrew Tate-like douchebag. It's fucking stupid. Um, but that's what they're trapped in. And then they're like, I don't understand why chicks can't, don't dig me. You're like, because... Like, even this. When you lose sight of what it means to be a man, what it means to look like a man, act like a man, and live like a man. It, there's different definitions of that, of course. And she even copped out of it before this. This is an ongoing thing. So if I'm hammering on this, I apologize. But... This has been a long time coming. That their their version of that is their problem. 
Because it, it has some reason. It has to involve being a jerk. And there's one thing like being a sharp, funny guy like, like I mean, like, um, uh, like Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man. Like that kind of stuff. Like being sharp and witty and a little bit cutting, cocky, but not at anyone's expense. And just being an asshole because it scares women into thinking, oh my God, he's tough, so I'll be with him. Maybe I'll, you know, like, I, that never made sense to me, and it never will. It just seems weak. It seems more fearful. I'm joined now by the Federalist writer who wrote that piece, Tristan Justice. Who, uh, calm down, ladies. I don't think he's available. And uh, besides, you couldn't handle it anyways. The amount of beefcake <laughs> happening here. Um, and, and by the way, if your definition is of living in your mom's basement using Wayfair uh, L-shaped desks that you got from a going out of business sale and, um, and wearing Donald Trump's tie because daddy might look your way, cool. Along with Terry Schilling, president of the American Principles Project and Newsmax contributor... So far, she's the most masculine person we've seen. Caroline Levitt, welcome to you all. What a great panel tonight. Glad so great, so great. And finally, people who define a guy wearing too much rouge, uh, a guy sitting in front of uh, like an American flag hanging stripes down because apparently we're in trouble. Glad to have you here. Thanks, John. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. No, uh, hey, hey, hey. A real man does not say thanks for having me. What the fuck is the matter with you? He, she goes, thanks for being here. And you go, get me a sandwich. <laughs> what? Tristan, let me start with you. By the way, I, I, I happen to take human interaction and masculinity and femininity as actual concepts very seriously because if trans people are going to transition, they, they transition to something and it's meaningful for them to have a target for themselves that makes them feel um, uh, comfortable in that sense. So if we eliminate true femininity, femininity at, the, at the far end or true masculinity at the f other far end, then it leaves them kind of without a, a life preserver and an ocean of gender confusion and that would be wrong. And so I take all these things very seriously. So this is, but it's, there's a depth of conversation around those things and a, and, and a, a, a long form conversation that needs to be had about those things that this has nothing to do with. This this is not about a serious conversation about gender or even masculinity. These are four clowns fucking around trying to save Republicans from themselves. You, uh, you wrote this piece, and I'm sure there are a lot of people confused, uh, a lot of people on the left. About you. Uh, like, they, they see this about masculinity, real man, and then they see you, and they're like, I don't know. I, 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 pencil dick comes to mind, and, uh, and you look like a, a stalker sort of serial killer skeevy kind of guy. You look like a you look like a red herring on a Mindhunter episode. Left rather confused right now that a gay man wrote an article about losing sight of I didn't even realize Tristan was gay. There you go. Of what it means to be a man and how the And she had to bring it up, didn't she? The left has lost their minds by deconstructing the foundation of healthy masculinity. Why was it important to you to write this article and, and what do you hope people will take away from this message? By the way, um, heterosexuality and homosexuality or even bisexuality, have absolutely nothing to do with the standards in general of masculinity or femininity. Because everybody likes the degree that they like. So the fact that he's gay and wrote an article about masculinity or the failing of masculinity, it could, there are a myriad of reasons why he could have written it. One of them could just be that he likes a certain kind of buff dude and they don't have those anymore in the same way that some guys decry the lack of playmates in their circle of possible lays. Well, I wrote the article, you know, the idea came last week when I was just thinking through these issues of, wow, I can't even remember the last time that I've even talked about what, you know, what mas what it means to be a man and, and how masculinity drives that forward. Uh, when I saw images of Sam Smith's transitioning, I just realized, you know, how unhealthy our entire culture is. Why? It's fucking Sam Smith. You know what's unhealthy? That you can't be you or believe in a standard if anybody else changes their standard. I, uh, 
how the fuck? Well, I mean, uh, uh, so masculinity world over in all of Europe died because the French aristocracy used to put on fucking pancake white and put birthmarks on their cheek and outline their lips with red and wear long feminine wigs. And so the because the French aristocracy did that, masculinity in Europe in, in the fucking dark ages ceased to exist. Meanwhile, Vikings, whatever. And I think it's really linked to uh, the erasure of, of uh, the differences between men and women. And we're not, we've kind of lost sight of what it means to be a man in our culture today. Uh, those images of Sam Smith becoming someone who's non-binary, who doesn't identify with one sex or another. Here's, here's one of the things. There's a trait that I think might fall into the masculine category that you guys believe in. And I, I certainly think they're the power of not giving a fuck. That there's a tremendous strength. And I, again, I don't attribute this just to masculine, uh, you know, masculinity or males. But in my case, it's one of the, one, one of the traits that I, I think is valuable, which is that, that caring enough not to give a fuck that I care so much about myself and my being in the world that if somebody else changes who they are, that's their fucking business. I don't care. I, yeah, I think Sam Smith broke Tristan's heart. Yes, because he liked him when he was gay, but now if he transitions, he's got to hate him for political reasons. You might be right. Uh, I think we're just breeding an entire generation of, of uh, confused people who don't even know what a man is. And I think that spells uh, pretty, some pretty major complicated... Yeah, it's... it's... It's terrible. I, you can't even. Top Gun did terribly because people don't want to see any any men doing man things. The Rambo movies did terrible. The Reacher was the biggest uh, streaming show on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't know how. Okay. We'll, I don't think we'll recover. I mean, I don't know how I recovered from you know, fucking. Here's a. Uh, Shot of uh, Kiss with Vampira, and um, how how do I know she was? She's not a man at this point. I can't keep track of anything. She's moving forward. Yeah, the, the left seems to have this growing obsession with canceling gender. And you know, Terry, you're a father of. Is it do we, or do we just allow people who don't necessarily categorize themselves to just be themselves? So that they can be that for real, and I can be and define masculinity for myself as much as I want to. And if they're offended by it, fuck them. If a non-binary person thinks that you know what I believe are masculine traits are you know are wrong or uh, Cro-Magnon or uh, toxic or whatever, I don't give a shit. And if I if somebody else doesn't think that their non-binary existence is an actual thing then they shouldn't give a shit either. That's what self-identity is about and maintaining strength in your identity. And if you're on your heels in your expression, it might be because you suspect on some level that you're either living a lie or not living up to the standard you actually believe has value. Is it six now? It's six kids, that's six. right. Six, and you know, you're a great father, you're a family man from just the- He's, how long, how long? How long before he has a Matt Schlapp moment? How long? Six kids? How long? A little bit I've gathered in knowing you the last couple of years. And sadly, though, you look at this country and one in four children uh, in America, they live without a father in the home. And that's. So yeah, that's just because men who leave. But they those men certainly are, uh, what can we say, getting with women. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, what kind of impact is that having on, on young boys growing up to become men? And what needs to change? What needs to happen, Terry, to change that absence of fathers that we're seeing? Well, thanks so much for having me, Jen. Uh, the big thing is... Again, a mistake. Don't thank the female host. She has to let you on. You're a man. Tell her uh, she's lucky to have you on there. Fart and then eat some jerky while you talk. The dads need to be involved in their kids' lives, right? Uh, we're seeing across the country lots of problems. We're seeing an increase in crime. We're seeing a decrease in educational attainment and career, uh, uh, and, and, you know, reaching careers and making money.
career reaching careers. I know there's a lot less of I that. Mean, this is all a nightmare, and it's because fathers aren't involved in their kids' lives. We're not actually showing our kids what it means to be masculine, and that's the real nightmare. Uh, what it means to be masculine is very simple. It means taking care of people. It means sacrificing. It means letting yourself be the victim and and letting. Well, I, I think we figured it out, finally, kids. Congratulations. We figured out why these people are always playing the victim. Why Republicans constantly think the world is against them because their very definition of being masculine includes identifying as a victim. What the ever-loving fuck? ...yourself go and be willing to fight evil things. Yeah, evil, fight evil things. <laughs> I, I don't know what he's talking about either. I honestly don't at this point. Does he have a list of things? Is this, is this from a book? This is terrible. Right, and that's why they, the, the left and the progressives have, have villainized masculinity. Is because yes, because we don't want to fight evil things. Because it's the biggest threat to their agenda. They have an evil agenda. Oh, I see. That's right. Because if men can stand up, they'll they'll punch the gay agenda right in the face. Right, Tristan? What? And the only thing that can stop evil is masculinity and, and being strong. And that's ultimately what it means to be a father. And that's what I'm instilling in my boys. And I think that's ultimately what's missing in so many households across. The hey, boys, are we going to stop evil today? That's right. That's right. Yo, and when you go to school today, everybody remember, it's your job to stop evil. And how do we stop evil? That's right. By identifying as a victim. Okay, go get them. Start crying. Start crying. You better be crying before you get to that bus. Or I'm going to uh, not do anything. Because you should figure this out on your own. Because parenting is, is gay woman stuff. It's America. You know, Caroline, I'm afraid if this continues on, we're going to end up in a society where it's nothing but Adam Kinzinger's and Beto O'Rourke's eventually if we... If we... <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. Um. Crush this masculinity. And, I, you know, I don't want to live in a society where men are afraid to open the door for a woman or ask for a phone number politely. Yeah, we, that's not how the world is right now. Uh, do we need manliness for a healthy republic and strong society? Of course we do. And I'd like to applaud Tristan for speaking truth to power on this issue. Speaking truth to power? The fuck are you talking about? He wrote an article in The Federalist. Has anybody called The Federalist to see if they learned their fucking lesson? Your article was very well written and enlightening. And if anyone hasn't read it, I would... Yes. Uh, and, and, and she... It really resonated with her. You know. As a man. Encourage them too. But as a young, unmarried woman, this... All right. Why are you even allowed to talk? Where is this? Is this? Who, are, do you even Federalist? What's wrong? Where, do you learn nothing from the hours of Andrew Tate videos you watch? This woman should have duct tape on her face. Clearly. What? This issue is deeply personal to me, not just for personal dating reasons, but also because I see the constant cultural pressure on women my age to hate men to despise strong men in their lives, whether it's their own fathers or men that they should be embracing. Is, is this... Is part, is part of being man, being straight, is spray tan from the neck down, but wearing clown white on your entire head? And dating, women are taught, again, to hate men, and they are taught uh, not to be mothers and to embrace our feminine roles, our traditional feminine roles in society. So if we don't stop... Uh, Brad Pitt wearing a, a skirt, at, at, a, a.k.a. kilt, who gives a shit? This now. We're gonna Do you by the way, at a certain point, you think Brad Pitt's just like run out of fashion things to show off? He's fucking Brad Pitt at this point. They're like, oh my God, this is terrible. Brad Pitt's... Get it, he's wearing a skirt. You can see his legs you want to lick them <laughs> have really serious implications in the future a national security crisis 
we're already seeing that with by the way can you look at the bottom of the page uh, the bottom of the screen real quick look at the bottom of the screen as she's talking uh, there it, the the scroll what it's saying about the gun used by the toddler the six-year-old who shot his teacher look watch read what really it says lawyer gun used by child who shot crisis. teacher was secured military every <laughs> yeah uh-huh right in the kid's fucking hand and the bullet was secured in her fucking arm. Branch of our military recruitment levels are at tragic, very scary levels, low levels. We'll see it in our econ in our economy, an economic crisis. If we're not breeding strong men to take on roles in manufacturing and industries that are the backbone of our economy. Which, by the way, do not require a college degree and is one of the reasons why there are fewer men getting college degrees because they are choosing vocations because a lot of them pay really fucking well. That poses an economic crisis, and thirdly, a humanitarian crisis. If we're pitting men and women against each other, we're not fostering family values, uh, it's going to have real serious... What if they're what if they're covered in whipped cream in a... Never mind. ...serious implications for our society, our culture, and our country moving forward. Tore arm, baby. Calm down, Sarpas. Yeah, the consequences should be realized here. Great point to make there, Caroline. And, you know, obviously this war on men and, and masculinity, it's not good for the future of America. By the way, I think it's very important to note that uh, there is one straight male, allegedly, in this panel on masculinity on Newsmax. If this panel was on MSNBC, that would be a talking point. Newsmax would go, oh my God, they had a panel on fucking masculinity and the crisis men are in and there's like one dad with six kids and two chicks and a gay guy and they're telling men how to like you know that would be the fucking conversation yeah it's a dumb argument too <laughs> this is stupid Miracle. by the way uh this ha this is happening this this segment is being posted by them during a time when allegedly anyways um the the republicans control the house and it's smooth sailing for trump into the white house in a couple of years Everything's going so fucking well that they have classified documents. They could 24-7 talk about the Biden shit, but they can't because every time they bring it up, they have to bring up the Trump stuff and Trump gets mad, so they have to avoid it. They can only bring it up occasionally, bat down the Trump stuff, and then forget about it. But we need to come together uh, and have a general non-political understanding of what defines a man. And before we go, I'd like to ask each one of you uh, it, briefly, what's your definition of a man and, and what a man should be? Tristan, I'll start with you. Well, I think a man is uh, someone who is is strong and lives a purpose-driven life, not to be some influencer, bodybuilder influencer on Instagram, but to, you know, who's driven to help their neighbor, help their community, and engage as an active, productive citizen in society. Yeah, but that's that's a, what a human being should do. There's no particularly masculine aspect of it unless you attribute it to certain areas, physically involved in your community. You know, always around to lift a bookcase off of someone after an earthquake. That kind of shit. Because otherwise, shouldn't everybody try to be a productive, focus-driven human being with a purpose in their fucking life? Even if, if, if their idea of femininity, femininity has to do with women, or it has to do with uh, children, rather, that women need to have kids, that would be the purpose-driven element to their community. And then having everybody over for cookies, I don't know what the fuck, being a scout mom, shit like that. What's the difference? Oh my God, this is stupid. Terry, your response? And I don't know why they're showing, like, dating videos from the 50s. Hey, Carol, would you like to sit down on at the edge of the picnic and have a, a soda pop with me? Yeah. Uh, don't worry about me trying to pick your lock. I'm afraid of my own penis. We don't do sex ed. Look, it's an adult human female. Uh, I'm sorry, an adult human... Oh, now you've done it. Uh, well, now it could be anything. A man, his definition of a man is an adult human female. God damn it. These woke bastards that have taken over Newsmax, it's disgusting. Wokey fucking wokey woke. What a dipshit. Look, it's a... Hold on. Ask him again. There, there, I, I just love this old stock footage. Old time TV, it just says up in the corner. Terry, your response? Look, it's an adult human female. Uh, I'm sorry, an adult human male. Um, who protects his family, who protects his society, who serves his community, who dies to himself and, uh, you know, serves. Die, dies to himself? 
dives, dies, dives, dies. Who serves his community, who dies to himself and who dies to himself. And, uh, you know, serves, is willing to sacrifice for the greater good. So a servant. Okay, so men are servants. I see. So they should take jobs in the service industry, I suppose. Maybe waiters. Um, what's the best way that they can serve or whatever? Maybe short order cooks. Maybe they could, uh, I don't know. Any, anywhere they could carry a tray. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> please, by the way, everybody in the chat room, please don't for a second take this seriously. If we weren't looking at it, it's like a tree falling in the forest. It doesn't make a noise. This is so stupid. Real Man Frost's tips. I agree. Um, what tips are we talking about? I don't care. Um, <coughs> but, um, all right. Hold on. Now, Caroline, we have to... Ca Caroline, tell us what a man is from a, a lady who doesn't have one yet. Of course, get the female perspective. What is a man and... Didn't he just give the female perspective? I mean, was that a Freudian slip? What does... Was Lindsey Graham not available? A woman want to see in a man. I love the question. It's crazy we even have to talk about this on a news segment. But First of all, people have been asking the question, what does a woman want in a man or what does a man want in a woman? I mean, their entire magazines dedicated to that fucking thing. For my whole goddamn life, they've been talking about this shit. The man is someone who stands up for his family. Teen Beat 1985, does your boyfriend have uh, macho? Exactly. Family provides for those that he loves and contributes to his community. I read interesting articles. What kind of commie bullshit is this? What if he doesn't fucking want to? Great example, helping an elderly woman with her groceries, helping a neighbor or a friend. If you know what I mean. Huh? Huh? I'm sorry. And putting yourself before or putting others before uh, where the fuck have you been what i was helping the old lady across the street with her groceries for three fucking hours how old is she 24 get out for yourself that's the definition of a man i'm proud to have so many strong men in my life two older brothers a great father we love men we need men and as women jen we should not be afraid to say that uh, you don't have to be able to say it. Just don't yell it in a bar after, say, 1030 at night. So I just say it's a, it, you'll get followed to your car. It won't be fun. Amen to that. Tristan, Terry, and Caroline, what a great panel tonight. It's a terrible panel. This is fucking awful. This is just dumb. The fact that this conversation, what is a man? Jesus Christ. And again, they couldn't even define it. They had multiple versions of it. Most of it didn't even have anything to do with masculine traits at all. I mean, for fuck's sake, wide shoulders, a tapered waist, the ability to lift something heavy, um, knowing how to cook and kill something if necessary, being willing to go downstairs when there's a funky noise, when the rest of the family can stay upstairs while you do it. Uh, the ability to fight if need be and the wisdom to not do it um, unless it's necessary. There's a hundred different ways I would, I would attribute that. Yeah, the ability to eat five eggs in a, like in one sitting, drinking raw eggs. There you go. Um. Thank you all for being brave enough to have this conversation. That yeah, thanks for being brave, guys. <laughs> this really was an act of bravery. You're all men now. Men should be brave, and you're brave for coming on here and talking. Just shit. I don't know what you were saying. I don't know what I'm saying. This is a waste of fucking time. Somehow in society today is now considered uh, taboo. I'm sure liberal, 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 liberal Twitter is blowing up right now. No, liberal, liberal Twitter is not. They, they are honest to God. I'm almost sorry I showed you guys this. Nobody on liberal Twitter saw a fucking Newsmax segment about a Federalist article. Jesus Christ. Like. Huff your own fucking paint. I appreciate having y'all here. <laughs> I don't buy it. I'm just going to go out. I'm just my ding. It's just. T I'm just saying I, I'm. They couldn't have like Tyrese on just to embarrass everyone with being like a thick re with his wrestling belt and his no mustache beard shit. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Like that's. That's a constant conversation. And again, I would like to remind everybody, 
that when you see these conversations happening, we'll end on this because I got to go and, and eat something and then, you know, meet. Um, and then I got to get up in the morning and do radio. And then I got a show tomorrow night because uh, Nerd Halen tomorrow night at the M. It's going to be very exciting. So I got to stop talking. Um, that said, um, if someone defines their femininity or their masculinity based on traits that you disagree with or you think are too limited or old-fashioned or whatever, the, the simple answer to your, your feeling about it is, fuck you, mind your own business. And go about the process of displaying the traits that best uh, represent your idea. Because I got news for you. You do it whether you think you do or not. All those, the dudes on that panel with the, his smarmy Devin Nunes smile and, and the, the, the guy who would like bench press a fucking paper clip but is lecturing everybody else about masculinity. Those guys are both exemplifying their version of masculinity. Not the one they're talking about. Not the one that they're proselytizing or selling. But the one that they actually embody. And no one can dodge that. If you allow yourself to be yourself, you will be the example of masculinity or femininity in your life that that you're present with, that you that's real. And you can have an ideal that you have not reached in a category like masculinity or femininity or even intellectual versus physical or wherever your your priorities lie in your own humanity as a philosophy. You are currently exemplifying the, those traits. As a man, more than likely, gay or straight or otherwise, you are defining masculinity for everyone around you through your behavior. Whether or not you, it, it's what you want it to be or what you think it should be is a totally different case. Because whatever you're doing, that's your definition. You can Now, your aspiration can be part of that. But unless you are taking steps to reach it, then... All you're exemplifying is that to you, I guess, masculinity involves setting up goals you never go after at all, right? Same thing with femininity. If femininity means to you everything that men used to do, women can do now, um, there are those who will interpret it that you view femininity as more weak than men do. That you are moving away from it because it is inherently weak and strength is represented in masculine traits, masculine, you know, traditionally masculine activities. And if that's the case, then you are defining femininity in that case. And, you know, and this is it, by the people around you, they will interpret it as feminine means weak because you are leaning on masculine traits to shore up what strength means to you. Hi. Aw. And, and let me show you what a real man can do. so big. You guys are getting so big. You're getting long. So they're getting broken tomorrow. The kittens are getting broken tomorrow. Hi guys. Hello. Are you good? What's going on? Smoking ash. How you guys doing? Um, hello. Hi buddy. Mm. You good? Hold on. You can't, you can't jump around. I know you want to be on the, it's all right. I like, I'll take one at a time. There you go. Cause, um, he like, he's like, cuddle me and pet me or let me down. Hi. Um, that they get broken tomorrow. And as you know, I don't call it fixed. Other people can call it fixed. I call it broken because it already works. <laughs> you don't fix something that already works. You break it. So I'm um, sorry about this, guys. And I'm sorry ahead of time. But you'll ultimately be happier. And oh my gosh, she's crawling on your back. And there you go. I'll swap out. There you go. There this one. And, uh, and Ash, I'm sorry. You're going to, some of your rambunctiousness is going bye bye. But at the same time, you'll be a, you're a lovely lap cat, and you'll be um, you'll be in a happy household someplace. You can't climb up there and just do that. She lets you do that. I don't. That's not how it works, buddy. Yeah, you're a good kitty. You just have a good time. There you are. That's right. That's right. That's a good. Look at this. That's a good one. So, um, anyways, love you guys. Hold on one second. Oh, <laughs> Chip. Chip <laughs> Hold on. Chip. By comparison, if I may. Hi, buddy. Um, <laughs> He's a man, he's a man, he's a man, he's a man. He's a man, he's a man, a man. 
He's a man. He's a hi, Chip. How you doing, buddy? He, he puts his hand on my. Uh, watch this. Don't sleep. Hold on. Don't speak. I know just what you're saying. <laughs> if I he does it or hush, shut up now. Voices carry. He'll do it. Hold on. No, he won't. He's you now he's fidgety because the other kittens are here and he wants to play with them on the ground. Where'd they go? They were just here. All right, go play with them, buddy. Um, Chip's a man. He's a man. He shits logs, and and when he pees, it sounds like a torrential downpour. He eats other people's food, and he doesn't apologize. 